Welcome everyone to this new series, Love Surfing, where I will be documenting my journey to find love and my life partner between Egypt and Europe, so it's between the Arabic world and the Western world. Nine years of online dating, uh, why it wasn't easy for me to find love, internet played a big role. So this is a long series, it already exists on my Arabic channel. And still continuing so if you speak Arabic you can go to Fokaira I will leave a link down but here I'm going to start the series love surfing in English this is Kalbuza and he actually he played a, a big role in this journey <laughs> so one day I will tell you his story but today I'm going to start by sharing why it was difficult for me to find love in Egypt I'm Teresa Khalil, a writer, a documentary filmmaker, and this channel is about everything that is unique, alternative, out of the box, and definitely my love surfing journey was unique. Why it was difficult for me to find love in Egypt? Okay, let me explain how does people get married in Egypt or find their life partners. There is arranged marriages and I was not into it at all. And the reason for this, uh, I made a video about it on my Arabic channel, why I rejected arranged marriages. But simply, it's because arranged marriages is a traditional way to find your life partner. And I'm not a traditional person. So it doesn't match with my personality. I'm someone who thinks outside the box. And so it really didn't fit with me at all. And also, as you know, probably by now that I'm antinatalist so I didn't want to have children and just arranged marriages doesn't work for me we are talking about Egypt here so of course there are other ways for you to find your life partner because females and males are allowed to mix at university sometimes in school and um, work at work so it happened to me two times that I was I wouldn't say in love but I would say attracted so the first year I was at university I was 18 years old and uh, I had some problem with, with my uh, documents and uh, my registration and I was late so I entered the college maybe two months later and once I entered, I saw someone, he saw me, and we just were attracted to each other. <laughs> okay. As simple as that. And um, he offered to show me around. He offered to uh, explain to me all the lectures that I missed. He uh, explained to me everything at university, where to go. We were attending lectures together sections together going to the bus together going to the restaurant together and i was new to the egyptian society because my mother was from upper egypt uh, she was never in cairo the capital so she really didn't know how things work in the capital uh, and she was always at home she was a housewife so she was always at home and my father was most of his life living in Sudan, a different culture, other society. And before that, we were in Saudi Arabia, also different culture, different society. And we always thought that Egypt was open. It, it, it seemed to be an open country. So I was with this guy and we were together most of the time. Because as I said, he took responsibility of me once I stepped my foot at university that he's going to show me around and help me. And But of course, we were attracted to each other. I wouldn't say love, but I would say attraction, okay? <laughs> and so at that time, I didn't know that there is um, an expression in Egypt called walking with. So if, if a male and a female are walking together, this is something so bad. They say in Arabic, mashyamaye. Mashia, walking, means like they are doing something sinful, right? <laughs> so 
I had no idea. I was just walking with the guy because he was helping me and he was nice and I was attracted to him and he was attracted to me. And that's it. Um, but then I was surprised that every now and then someone come and ask to talk with me in private. And then they tell me, Teresa, why are you with this guy? Why are you with this colleague all the time? And I say, we are friends. And then they are, they panic. What are you saying? Do you understand? What is the meaning of friends? And I said, no, I know that friends means friends. And um, so it was very, it was very weird, but I didn't care because I was telling everything to my mother. So I just didn't feel that I was doing something wrong. So I was telling her, uh, today I met this guy. We went to the restaurant of the university. We were sitting in the lectures together. We were everything I was telling to my mother. And so I didn't feel that I was doing something wrong. And I didn't care about all those people who were taking me on the side and telling me that you need to stop what you're doing. Uh, this is uh, not good. Uh, you will ruin your reputation. <laughs> the surprise was that I discovered that this guy who I was with all the time, and I thought he was my friend more than anything, like away even from the attraction, we were friends. And he was the most close one to me, the one that I, I shared with him my life, where I was living, what I was doing and all that. I discovered that he himself didn't respect me because I was walking with him all the time. Uh, and uh, I don't know, I'm not sure what exactly he was telling his male colleagues, but I started noticing that some of his colleagues uh, during the lecture, they come and sit too close to me. Uh, you can say like basically trying to harass me or sexually harass me, <laughs> something like that. So I wasn't sure what he was telling them. And uh, day after day after day, I started discovering that, okay, this guy seems that he's just trying to show off by walking with me. And, uh, and that uh, love in Egypt is not respected. So as long as you don't have marriage plans, as long as he didn't come to propose, then we are doing something wrong sinful something sinful so love is sinful until you do something what they call official official means that he come propose to the family that he wants to marry me but i didn't want to get married at all i was 18 years old so why would i want to get married i just we were just friends and we had no, nothing romantic going on with, uh, with between me and him he never touched my hand even. And really, basically, there was nothing happening beside being attracted, which is normal at this age, 18 years old, when you are attracted to the opposite sex, because you are a heterosexual. Yeah. <laughs> but so it got really bad after I discovered that he disrespect me and he, 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 he used to tell me, I like you, but I I think your brain need to be washed or I like you, but your head need to be smashed. You know, <laughs> that's, that, that's what he was telling. Those are like the romantic things that he was telling me. So <laughs> because I wasn't the usual traditional Egyptian that uh, he grew up with. And, uh, and this repeated again in another story when I was 25 years old and I was also attracted to another guy. Maybe I will share the story in another video. But so from that, I started understanding the Egyptian society and how do they look uh, at love? How can you find your life partner? You have two options, arranged marriages or rushed attraction that need to immediately convert to marriage as soon as possible or something like engagement or something official. You know, so I, I didn't want to get married at that time at all. So I just didn't have any kind of any relations with the other, with the opposite sex. And it was always suspicious, always, whenever I'm standing with a colleague talking, it was always this colleague himself is like looking around, feeling that he's doing something wrong. And, <laughs> and it was, 
it was for me very annoying and disgusting, especially because I had no intention. Like I was talking to him as a human being and he all the time has in mind that he's a male and I'm a female. Um, and it continued like this for years and years after I graduated, I worked in many companies and places and it was always the same. Yeah, males and females mix in Egypt, but they need to mix in groups. You can't, you can't just be one, one male and one female because uh, it's known that the devil will be the third and the devil means sexual attraction. So there was always this horror of that that is, for example, taken to the next level in countries such as Saudi Arabia when they really segregate between males and females. So in Egypt, it's not that, but it's also happening in the minds of the people. So they are always aware, like we could be sitting a group uh, laughing, uh, talking about different things, and then maybe some go away and a me and a, f a male is just left, only me and him. And then he starts panicking and he's like, <laughs> it's like, uh, oh, something can happen here. Attra attraction can, sexual attraction can happen here. Oh, oh oops. <laughs> so that was one of the difficulties I was facing in Egypt that, um, yeah, the only two times I was in, let's say, an attraction or a beginning of a love relation. Uh, it, it was very complicated and they they had all this in their brains going on and they always told me those romantic sentences. Teresa, I like you, but your brain need to, needs to be washed. Teresa, I like you, but your head needs to be smashed. And I just felt that this is uh, maybe a red flag. <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't want to be with someone who wants to smash my head, to be honest. <laughs> so this started long, long time before the internet. Uh, this was the society where I was. And uh, I just uh, was thinking, okay, it seems that I'm not getting along with such mentalities. And uh, luckily, after about, uh, I don't know, 15, 20 years, internet came into existence and online dating was a possibility, I thought, okay, maybe I can expand the circle of uh, people I, I, would, uh, I would like to discover. Maybe people from other cultures. I started my online dating journey. So far in this playlist of love surfing, I think there is two videos I put before. One is how I met my husband online. <laughs> and the other one is a documentary film I shot in Belgium during my love surfing journey when uh, I received a message on a dating website from a Belgian guy. And I documented in the film who I was at that time and how did this date go. So you can also watch it in this same series. I will leave a link to it probably in the first comment uh, or in the cards. So this is the beginning of the love surfing journey. I already published my online surfing book, which is now in Arabic, but I'm rewriting it in English. So stay tuned. I will announce when it's ready and see you in a coming video.